In these lessons so far, you've learned a lot about the statistical programming language R. You've learned how to set variables and work with data structures to create informative visualizations using ggplot2, and how to perform rigorous statistical tests. But data sets from the real world aren't so simple. They might contain dozens of variables across tens of thousands of observations. You may need to filter them based on quality considerations, and they might be spread across multiple data sets, leaving you to combine them together yourself. I'm David Robinson. And in this lesson, we're going to tie all your R skills together by learning how to perform exploratory data analysis using the powerful data.table package. As an example, we'll be analyzing a data set of historical baseball statistics, learning how to pre-process and filter it, how to combine multiple data sets together, and how to in answer interesting questions interactively with your data. This lesson will assume basic familiarity with R, especially vectors and data frames, with RStudio and with the ggplot2 package for visualization. One of the essential functions of computers is to take repetitive, dull tasks and automate them so they can easily be performed as many times as you need. Part of being a good programmer is sticking to this philosophy. So far, we've been working in the interactive R terminal. You can see that here. This is useful for running a line of code quickly and seeing the result. For instance, 3 plus 4, 5. Eight. Most of your analyses will take multiple lines of code, and they'll have to be run all in the same order. It's impractical to have to type them all in sequence in an interactive window. So let's instead write an R script, which will contain a series of commands that you want to run in order. So in R Studio, you go to File, New File, R Script. Or you can do Command Shift N to create a new R script. You'll see it pops up here above your interactive window. So write a couple of lines of R. For instance, let's say x equals 4, stating uh, the variable x equals 4, and y equals x plus 6. Now let's save our new script. First, we have to choose a working directory we're going to work in. You can do that here under the file manager. For instance, going to an empty directory like desktop R course. We go to More, Set as Working Directory, and we've set this up as where we'll be working. Now let's go to the script. You can save with Command S or by pressing this floppy disk icon. So it's Script, and it'll save into our Working Directory. You can see it pop up here. Now we can run this script, all the commands in the script, all at once by clicking Source at the top of the script. Notice that a command pops up in your interactive window, the source command. That means it ran all the commands in your script in a row. You can see this by checking the values of x or y. So even though you don't see the commands down here, they did run when you hit source. Incidentally, there's a keyboard shortcut for sourcing a current file. You can do command shift s or control shift s if you're on a Windows computer. Now, what if we want some output to our script besides just setting a few variables? Normally, we'd be able to view the contents of a variable just by typing that variable by itself. For instance, y. So let's see if that works here. y, save, and source. Notice there was no output. That's because we, when we run outside of the interactive terminal, values don't print unless you explicitly tell them to do so. You can do that with the print function. Change your line in the file to print parentheses y. Save and source. And now you can see the output in your interactive window. So remember that when you're running inside a script, if you actually want to see an output, you have to explicitly print it. Importantly, the same is true of a ggplot2 plot. Let's create a basic ggplot. For instance, here, we'll do library ggplot2 to import it. And then we do ggplot, the data we're plotting. Let's use the built in MT cars data set. So do data MT cars. Then ggplot, the data will work with MT cars. Then make a plot of miles per ga gallon, so weight, miles per gallon. Make it a scatter plot. 
you can see as soon as we hit return, we created the scatter plot here. Now let's take those lines of code and put them into our, our script instead. Save. Let's clear the current plot and then hit source. What you see is no plot showed up. This is because when it's in a file, a ggplot, just like a regular variable, needs to be printed to show up. You do that with print parentheses around the ggplot call. Now if we save and source the file, now the plot gets created. Finally, there's a useful shortcut for running one line at a time in your script. If you put your cursor on a particular line of code, say x equals 4, and you hit command return in Mac or, or control enter in Windows, you'll run just that line of code. You see it pops up in the interactive terminal. This means you don't have to take a line from your script, copy and paste it. You can simply say command return, command return to let these lines happen one at a time. This is useful for if you want to run a single line of code in your script, but don't want to go through the time of rerunning the whole file. Our scripts can be as long as you like. Yours may end up being hundreds or even thousands of lines of code, and they're the only practical way to organize a complicated analysis productively.